Hey there, art nerds. Today I have a fun and easy watercolor tutorial for you guys. If you don't draw well, fear not. This is a great tutorial for you. We're going to be using granulating watercolors with golden inks to make beautiful shimmery golden stars. So grab your paint, your paintbrushes, your ink, and your dip pen, and let's get started. These are the materials you'll need to paint along with me. A piece of Coroplast or Gator Board, MT's white washi tape, Winsor Newton's gold ink, Sennelier or any other French aquamarine, Winsor Newton's small blue, and Soho's urban blue violet, a scrap of Stonehenge aqua cold press watercolor paper, something to paint on like a palette, so I have a ceramic dish here, a dip pin with the nib of your choice, I'm using a caged G nib, and a selection of brushes. I have here some silver black velvet watercolor brushes. You're also going to need a paper towel. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to secure my watercolor paper to my support, which would be the Coroplast or Gator Board. And that's what I'm using the MT White Washi Tape for. MT is one of my favorite washi tapes. So this is really great because even if I get it really wet, it's not going to pull up or separate unlike cheaper tapes. And it's also not going to tear up the paper. This tape is great. I'm going to have all the materials that you'll need to complete this tutorial down in the description below. And I'm going to use Amazon affiliate links to make it a little bit easier for you to shop and to help me earn a little bit of money for the channel. So I have my watercolors here. I'm working from tube today. I'm using Sennelier French Ultramarine, I'm using Winsor & Newton Small Blue, and I'm using Soho's Urban Blue Violet. Two of these colors have a lot of granulation, so I wanted to go for sort of warm blue colors that have differing amounts of staining and granulation. So our French Ultramarine is a traditionally fairly granulating color. Our Small Blue, Small is made from ground up blue glass, so this is a very granulating color. And then Soho's Urban Blue blue violet is a much darker blue violet that's more staining than granulating. So I'm starting by wetting my paper with some clean water. I'm using filtered water here because I live in an area that has a lot of minerals in the water and I don't want to have to calculate that or keep that into consideration when I'm painting. I'm also going to elevate the top of my painting surface just a little bit so that we can get our paint and our water to run down the canvas. So I'm starting with my French ultramarine and I'm doing kind of a lazy sloppy gradiated wash and blending it out at the bottom. I want to use a lot of water with this because I want to encourage it to granulate as much as possible. So the two cool points about this tutorial are going to be the granulation in our warm blues and the gold accents that we're going to add a little bit later on. So I am dabbing my French ultramarine blue on really loosely into this very wet watercolor paper. We're going to get a lot of runs and that is fine. That's exactly what we want. And I'm trying to create an atmospheric sort of cloud technique. I want it to look like these are stars against a cloudy sky. And it's not meant to be an accurate depiction. It's more meant to be kind of um, imagery or iconographic. So not really realistic at all. I'm also going to go back in and dab up some of the extra color as well as some of the extra water that started to pool on this paper. So it's really important that you work on a heavier cotton rag paper. I'm painting on 140 pound cotton rag paper today. 300 pound would be good. If you don't feel like attaching this to a stretcher board, you could work on a watercolor block. But I find that these kind of bookmarks, even though they're kind of large for bookmarks, it's a great way to use up scraps of watercolor paper from larger illustrations. It allows me to play around with different techniques and I can always scan it and then share the bookmarks in a smaller form. So while this is still wet, I'm going in next with our smalt blue. So the blue that's made from ground up glass and this is going to granulate a little bit more than our French ultramarine so we're going to get some really nice differing granulations with this and the only color that I might be concerned about being possibly fugitive would be the Soho urban blue violet Soho is a line that used to be carried by Jerry Zarorama they don't carry it anymore 
and uh, so basically any really good blue violet dark blue violet would work well for this and it is more staining so I have a feeling it might be a dye based color I've been using Soho urban blue violet for years and I haven't really noticed any shift in the colors especially in my comic pages but it, it's one of those that might be a little bit iffy so I just want to point that out in case you're using exactly the same paints as me you absolutely don't have to to be able to paint this you can use whatever colors you want the big points are the granulation and the differing granulation so finally I go in with my urban blue violet and I'm gonna apply that mostly to the top so for this bookmark I'm keeping my darker colors mainly at the top of the bookmark and I'm trying to get lighter as I go down I'm also trying to work wet into wet now if you live in an area like I do that is very very humid it can be a little bit difficult to control the humidity in your house I do have a whole house dehumidifier and I'm running that while I'm painting this just to kind of help with the dry times some people would recommend using a hair dryer for this I've had negative experiences using a hair dryer with my watercolor illustrations although probably in this instance it wouldn't have those same negative effects it's typically when I'm using masking fluid it tends to make the masking fluid permanently fuse to the paper but we're not using masking fluid today so if you want to pull out your hair dryer and set it to cool you could probably do that but what I end up doing is I end up setting this bookmark in the same room where the dehumidifier is so my laundry room when it's not running laundry and that's going to also help it dry a little bit quicker so I'm just kind of like noodling around with it now, adding in some clean water so that I get these kind of color blooms. I really want to encourage granulation and I really want to encourage the colors to kind of have bands. I want to be able to see a cloud-like effect with the watercolors. So I'm kind of just using my own discretion, adding water or color here and there, and then using a thirsty brush to kind of pick up the excess water so it doesn't puddle too much on the paper. If you find that you've added too much color or too much water, you can always blot it back out using a clean paper towel. I like to use Viva paper towels for this because they, you can get the kind that don't have much of a distinct surface texture and don't have any printing on them. And I find that that just works better for lifting things back up with watercolor because it's not going to leave a texture. Of course, if you want that texture, you can definitely get the kind that have a texture on them and that can add a fun surface design to your watercolor art and illustrations. At this point, it's basically up to your discretion, what you like and what you feel looks good. If you wanna add in some additional colors, you can, but there's something about the warm blues and the gold that just feels so rich. I think it's because there's a rich tradition of gold and those kind of ultramarine blues being used in religious paintings to denote that kind of divinity and richness that works so well here. So hey, if you have something that works, why try to fix it? So at this point, it's up to your discretion, you can, kind of noodle around with it and adjust it as you see fit. Once you've finished adding your watercolor, allow it to dry completely, totally and fully before we start inking on this because we're going to be using a dip pin nib on that and that can have a tendency to cut into the paper surface if it's not fully dry. So here we have our dried watercolor bookmark. It's now time for step two. So I'm going to be using a dip pin and Winsor & Newton's gold ink for this. What I like about Winsor & Newton's gold ink is that it actually contains flecks of bronze. So it looks really, really rich in metallic. And I've decanted a little bit of it into a smaller glass container, like a dinky dip. It's gonna make it easier for me to ink it. So this is the basic star shape we're going to be using, kind of like a shoujo sparkle. And then we're gonna use dots and lines to just make each individual star look a little bit different. So this is a very, very easy star to draw. It doesn't take a whole lot of ability, but you might wanna practice doodling a few before we actually start inking 
them on the bookmark. We're also going to vary the size to give us a little bit more visual interest with the smaller stars being primarily at the bottom of the bookmark and then they're going to get larger as we go up. So a dip pin with a cage nib means it has a spring welded onto the back and it gives it a larger ink capacity. So I'm not going to need to dip nearly as often. But one of the sort of problems with this ink is that those beautiful metallic sparkles do have a tendency to fall out of solution very quickly. So you're gonna need to recap whatever you are decanting it into and shake it frequently for most sparkle effect. Another kind of issue with dip pin is they deposit a lot of ink onto the paper. So the dry times are gonna be a little bit longer. So you just wanna be kind of patient as you're doing this, put on some chill music, relax, and give it plenty of time to dry. The plus side is the effect looks really, really cool and it's really not difficult at all. It's a pretty easy tutorial that doesn't require much more than just some patience and a little bit of familiarity with dip pens. Now I've got a lot of tutorials here on the channel for how to use dip pens but if you would rather use metallic watercolor or a gel pen even something you're more comfortable with by all means feel free to do so this is just meant to provide some inspiration and to get you guys using your paints and maybe trying something new without being stymied by drawing ability so even if you don't feel a hundred percent confident in your drawing ability this is still a pretty easy tutorial to follow along on so you guys can see the star shape pretty simple I also decided to go back after some of the outlines dried and fill some of the stars in that's just gonna add a little bit of variety I wanted it to I didn't want every single star to look too similar so I'm trying to find easy ways to add a little bit of variation without having to do a whole lot of drawing or without having to get too technical with it You guys can see how beautiful that metallic ink looks against that rich granulating blue. Copper and silver would also look absolutely beautiful with this. Or if you want to mix your gold or mix your silvers, feel free to do that. And if you were inspired by this tutorial and decided to try something similar and you decide to share it on social media, I would love it if you'd tag me so I can check out and be inspired in return. You can tag me at Natosoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P on every single platform. As I'm working, I also stop and take stock of what I've done and use that as an opportunity to think about where I might wanna add some more itty bitty little stars to get the effect that I'm really looking for.
have a tendency sometimes to overwork and overcrowd my art. So for this bookmark, I wanted to keep it really easy and really simple and loose. So while I am adding in a bunch of little stars, I'm careful not to overcrowd it too much. I'm also using the masking tape as an opportunity to do some stars that kind of go off the side of the canvas just a little bit because I know that the MT washi tape is going to stay in place and it's not going to just lift up or buckle as I try to draw on top of it. Now we have our beautiful glittering golden stars. I want to make sure this dries completely before I remove the masking fluid. And you guys can see those metallic particles settling out of the water. So once it dries completely, I am removing my masking fluid or masking tape, sorry, by pulling away at a 90 degree angle so that if it were to tear, it would rip the paper rather than ripping into the illustration. And there we have it, our completed watercolor bookmark. I've got some ideas for some other fun, easy watercolor bookmark tutorials that'll teach techniques that you guys can use either to make bookmarks or to make postcards or to use in your full scale illustrations. My goal is to empower and inspire you to use the art supplies that you already have to make satisfyingly simple yet beautiful little pieces of art because it's really important to me to help you guys make art a habit. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've got any suggestions, let me know down in the comments below and have a wonderful day, guys. Huge thanks to my amazing patrons on Patreon for their help and support. They help make tutorials like this possible. Thank you guys so much.